It's not over till it's over. Presidential candidate and Vice President Lenny Robredo reacts to the recent Pulsatia survey, which shows her voter preference rating at 24%. Although she still trails far behind her rival Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr., who enjoys 56% voter preference, Robredo says she remains optimistic. In an interview in Dagupan City, Friday, April 8, Robredo says she also came from behind in the 2016 vice presidential race. The March Pulse Asia survey shows Robredo's numbers improved by 9 percentage points from her February rating, which is at 15 percent. Her numbers also rise across all locations except NCR, while Marcos Jr.'s numbers dropped in four major locations. Robredo says this only shows that her campaign is gaining momentum. A day before, former House Speaker and former Duterte ally Pantaleon Alvarez led 35,000 Tabaoenos in Tagum City in calling for support for Robredo, a politician he once sought to impeach. The Davao del Norte 1st District Representative raised his fist in hyping up the crowd of Robredo supporters in Duterte land. Buntag na! Gising na! Mindanao! Magleni na kita! Alvarez once targeted Robredo in the past whenever she criticized the president's abusive policies. But he has since become an opposition figure to the Dutertes when Sara Duterte helped plot his ouster as House Speaker in 2018. Robredo and Alvarez said in separate Raptor interviews their new alliance is not transactional. The Department of Education, or DEPED, is under fire again for another self-learning module mishap, this time involving Vice President Lenny Robredo. The activity from the subject Introduction to the Philosophy of Human Person asks grade 11 students to identify which headline has no errors in terms of grammar, spelling, and content. The choices were all about Robredo, which seemed to put her in a bad light without proper context. The options read A. Robredo chides government for unclear communication on new quarantine rules. B. Robredo blames the government as they don't have clear rules in quarantine. C. Robredo charged the government as culprit for confusion in quarantine. And D. Robredo blames those in executive branch for communications unclear. Another question about identifying substantiated generalization also contains Robredo in all choices. The module was made in 2020 but surfaced online on Thursday, April 7, a little over a month before elections. Dep Ed Manila releases a statement saying it already directed school heads to retrieve copies of the said module and remove it online. It admits the module did not go through the conformance review as it should have, and also apologizes for any harm or inconvenience that this may have caused individuals or groups. According to a study done by Check.ph, Robredo has been the biggest victim of disinformation online. Meanwhile, her main rival, frontrunner and dictator son Ferdinand Marcos Jr., has benefited the most from it. Need more context, clarity, and perspective? Get the full picture with Rappler Plus. With exclusive content and events, you'll get an opportunity to discuss issues with reporters, experts, and featured guests while helping Rappler continue its fearless journalism. Join now. The Philippine Health Department says it is seeking approval from the Food and Drug Administration for the emergency use of COVID-19 booster shots for minors aged 12 to 17. In a press briefing Friday, April 8, Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Vergere says the health agency is still waiting for the FDA to release an amended emergency use authorization on COVID-19 booster shots for minors. The amended EUA seeks to include a fourth dose for the elderly and immunocompromised individuals. If the DOH gets FDA FDA approval, the Philippines will join a number of countries that started administering booster shots to minors aged 12 to 17 as the threat of another variant, Omicron XE, looms. As of Thursday, April 7, over 66.5 million of the Philippines' 110 million population have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Russian co-winner of the 2021 Nobel Peace Prize Dmitry Muratov says he was attacked on a train with red paint in an apparent protest over his newspaper's coverage of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Pictures posted by the newspaper on Telegram Thursday, April 7, show Muratov with red paint on his head and clothes and around his sleeping compartment on a Moscow Samara train. Muratov says the attackers poured oil paint with acetone all over the compartment and that his eyes are burning badly. 
The Post quoted the attacker as saying, Muratov, this is for you from our boys. Muratov's Novaya Gazeta investigative newspaper last week announced it was suspending its online and print activities until the end of what Russia calls its special operation in Ukraine. Pressure against liberal Russian media outlets has mounted since Moscow sent troops into Ukraine in February. Meantime, the United Nations General Assembly suspends Russia from the UN Human Rights Council over reports of gross and systematic violations and abuses of human rights in Ukraine. Russia's deputy UN ambassador, Gennady Kuzmin, describes the move as an illegitimate and politically motivated step. Shortly after, he announces Russia's decision to quit the Human Rights Council altogether. EXO member Lei announces his departure from agency SM Entertainment on Friday, April 8, the day of EXO's 10th anniversary as a group. Lei shares a personal handwritten letter on Instagram, saying this decade is one of the greatest gifts he could have ever received. In the letter, he gives thanks to his EXO brothers, to his colleagues at SM, and to his fans. The Chinese K-pop star writes, It is time for his new beginning as a 30-year-old, but will always be Lei when his members need him. The South Korean singer, dancer, music producer, and actor has been with EXO since the group's debut in 2012 on their SM Entertainment.